Have you ever had a file on one computer that you needed to move over to a second computer and then you went through this whole hassle of looking for a flash drive? Or maybe you went through the whole thing where you try to email the file to yourself but maybe the file is too big so you have to go through a whole problem of trying to upload it somewhere and it's just a big hassle and it doesn't seem like we should still be having to go through all these things in the year 2022. Now that so many people are working from home, there's probably a lot of people who are finding themselves in this situation where maybe they have their personal computer and then they have a work computer, or maybe there are multiple family members that have their own laptops and they're just all on the same network and they run into situations all the time where they need to move something from one computer to the other and there just doesn't seem like that good of a way to do it. Fortunately, there is a good way, and it's called a NAS, or a Network Attached Storage Device. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your own personal Network Attached Storage Device out of a Raspberry Pi, and I'm actually going to be using the tutorial that you can find on the raspberrypi.com website. They have a pretty good tutorial there, and I'm, for the most part, going to be just following along with their instructions. First thing, we just need to go over what you need for this project. Obviously, you need a Raspberry Pi. They actually recommend a Raspberry Pi 4 just because it's the most recent model. It's going to have the best specs. It's going to be the fastest for transferring data. Next is going to be a micro SD card. So right here, I have an 8 gigabyte micro SD card, and that's going to be what we install the operating system on. Pretty much any kind of Raspberry Pi project, that's usually going to be where you install the Raspberry Pi operating system. I also need a micro SD card reader, which I'm going to use to actually write the operating system onto that SD. And I'm going to skip down to the bottom of their list where it says external storage. I actually have a 240 gigabyte solid state drive that I have just had lying around for a while. I upgraded my solid state in my desktop PC probably over a year ago at this point. And this is the old solid state that I had in my PC before that. And I took it out and just kind of put it on a shelf and didn't really have any purpose for it. But now I'm going to use this as the external storage for this project. And I also have this adapter so that I can plug it in through one of the USB ports on the Raspberry Pi. You can get one of these on Amazon or any other like electronic store. You can probably find them. They're pretty cheap. I want to say like maybe 20 bucks, something like that. So this is what I'm going to use for my external storage, but you can use just like a USB flash drive or any sort of external storage device that you might have lying around. They also recommend using a powered USB hub, and that's just to maintain a consistent power supply to your external hard drive. But I don't have a powered USB hub just lying around, and I didn't order one in time to make this video. So I'm just going to use this adapter to plug this external hard drive directly into one of the USB ports on the Raspberry Pi. But if you would like to have that extra reliability, then by all means, use a powered USB hub. The only other things left on the list are a power supply which most likely came with your Raspberry Pi. And the only other thing is an ethernet cable. We are gonna want to use the ethernet port to connect to our network just to get that most stable connection and get the best download and upload speed that we can possibly get. So now that we have all the supplies that we need, the first step is going to be installing the operating system on our SD card. So we're gonna take our USB card and plug it into our USB card reader. And now we're gonna plug this into our PC and we're going to use the Raspberry Pi imager to download the proper operating system onto that SD card. So now that we have our SD card plugged into our PC, we're going to open up the Raspberry Pi imager and we're going to first choose the operating system that we want to install. In this tutorial, they suggest using the Raspberry Pi OS Lite which is just a lighter weight version of the Raspberry Pi OS that doesn't have a desktop environment. It's only the command line. So we're going to go to Choose OS, we're going to go to Raspberry Pi OS Other, and we're going to select Raspberry Pi OS Lite. Now we need to choose the storage where we are going to install that operating system. Here is our micro SD card reader. 
We're going to select that. I'm going to go to the cog wheel and I'm going to enable SSH. And I can also go ahead and change the username and password. And I'm also going to change the host name to PyNAS. Now I'm ready to write that operating system onto my micro SD card. So now that we have our operating system installed on our micro SD card, we can begin plugging everything into our Raspberry Pi and start getting up and running. First, we can plug in our micro SD card, my SSD that's plugged in, and we can go ahead and plug our Ethernet cable into it. And now that we have all of our different things plugged into our Raspberry Pi, last but not least, we can plug in our power. So that might have taken a couple minutes just for it to go through all the setup processes, but after a little while, it should be online and connected to your network and have an IP address and all that kind of thing. And in the documentation that they have here, it talks about how to find your IP address by looking at your home router settings. And that's a perfectly valid way to find your IP address. But if you remember back when I was going through those advanced options in the Raspberry Pi Imager, I also changed the host name and I made the host name Pi NAS. And so I can actually use that host name to connect to it directly over SSH instead of having to know what that IP address is. I'm going to use an SSH utility called PuTTY in order to connect to my Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to type in my host name, which is Pi NAS. I'm going to go over port 22, which is the default SSH port, and I'm going to hit open. And now I have this box here where I can log in to my device. So log in as, I'm going to use my username, which I left as the default as Pi and the password. Now I'm logged in to my device. That Pi NAS, that is this device right here. So now that we have SSH access to our device, the next step it says to do is to run this command, which is sudo rm-f slash etsy slash systemd slash network slash 99-default.link. I'll be honest, I don't know exactly what this command does. I know that rm removes that file, so we are removing this file for some reason, but I don't know exactly what that file does or why we need to remove it. I assume it has something to do with the default network settings of the Raspberry Pi, but I've seen multiple guides mention that you should run this command. I'm going to do that. You can make your own decision whether or not you want to follow that step or try doing it without it and see if everything breaks and blows up in your face. and report back let me know but i'm going to just run this little command now i need to reboot the device when you reboot that will kill your ssh session so we're going to give that a couple minutes just to let it go through the boot process and then we'll get back in and continue on to the next steps okay so i've rebooted my raspberry pi and i've reconnected over ssh using putty now we can actually start setting up the part that's going to handle the network storage part for this, we're going to use something called Open Media Vault, which is uh, some free software you can get online. And we're going to use a command called wget in order to install it. So they have this very handy little one liner command. And now it's going to install those packages that it needs after it's complete. Then we'll just move on to the next step. A little longer than a few minutes later. Okay, so that took a while. But once it finishes, you should see this message at the bottom, network setup rebooting. Just like last time, we're gonna lose our SSH session. So we can actually just close PuTTY and we're not actually gonna need to access SSH anymore for this process. The next thing we need to do is just open a web browser and we're going to either type in the IP address or the host name that you set for your Raspberry Pi. So I set mine as PyNAS. So I'm going to go to HTTP colon slash slash PyNAS. One thing to note is if you just type your host name, your browser might default to HTTPS, which is usually a good thing. But in this case, 
that will not work. You need to change it to HTTP. It will ask for a username and password. By default, the credentials are username admin, password, open media vault. So we can type those in. The first thing that we need to do is change that password. So we're going to hit the cog wheel up here, change password, and we're going to type a new password for our admin account for Open Media Vault. So now that we've changed our password, now we need to set up our actual storage device. So we're going to select storage, then we're going to select disks, and we should see our SD card, which is this right here. It has 7.4 gigs available. And then we see the second device that has 223 gigs available. And that is the solid state drive that we want to use for our external storage. But now that we know it's there, we're going to go to file system. And we're going to create a new file system. We're going to select that solid state drive. Save. Once again, this will take a few minutes. So we'll come back when it's done and continue to the next step. So after we've created the file system, now we need to actually mount that file system. So click right here, select that file system that we just created, hit save. Do you really want to mount this file system? Yes, I do. It's asking me to apply these changes. I will apply. So now that our file system is mounted, now we need to create a shared folder where we're actually going to be able to copy files to and from on that storage device. So we're going to click shared folders right here on the left, click create, and I'm going to just call it pi nas, why not? Select a file system. There's our file system that we just mounted. And we're going to click Save. And we need to, once again, apply those changes. And the last thing we need to do to set up our device is just make sure that our other computers on our network can actually find it. So we're going to go to Services, SMB, CIFS, Settings. We're going to click Enabled, hit Save apply that setting as well. I just realized that my camera has been blocking the top right corner, but whenever that um, pending configuration changes comes up, there's a little check mark on the top right corner that you have to click just to apply those changes you've made. And now under shares, we're going to click create, select a shared folder, and then we should see that Pi NAS folder that we just created. And we're going to scroll down and click save. And once again, we're going to apply those changes, wait for those changes to be applied, and then that should be everything for the setup. So the only other thing we need to do is actually access our NAS from our PC or whatever other computer on your network that you want to access it from. And they have in the documentation how to access it from a Mac, from Windows, even from an iPhone. But there is one little issue with this. In the documentation, it says that when you connect to it, it will ask for the username and password, and you'll just use the username and password that you set up during the Raspberry Pi imager process. But I've had some issues where that password wasn't working, and I've also seen other people run into that issue as well. What we're going to do is go to the Open Media Vault and click on Users, and we see our Pi user right there. And we're going to click on it, click edit, and we're just going to give it a new password. So whatever password you want to give it, we're going to hit save. We're going to need to apply those changes. Now we can actually access our NAS. So there are a few different ways to actually access a network drive from your Windows PC. They walk through one right here. The way I'm going to do it is just right click, add a network location. And I'm just going to type in backslash backslash Pi NAS, which is the name of the Raspberry Pi, and then Pi NAS, which is the name for the shared drive that I put on the Pi. In retrospect, I probably shouldn't have named them the same thing. I probably should have made it more clear, but it's fine. We're going with it. Now it's going to ask for the credentials, and this is where you put in that username and password that you just set in your settings. So the username is pi, and the password is going to be that password that I just set. And now I have 
my little network drive right here and I can put files on this and I'll be able to transfer those files on any device without having to go through that hassle of finding a flash drive or trying to email things to myself and going through all that when I can just drag and drop it and it'll be there waiting for me on whatever other computer I want to access it from.